Okay, hello again. Today we're going to talk about the empirical rule for normal distributions. This is something that you learn in statistics. And just to recall, normally distributed data follows what we call the symmetric bell-shaped curve. And I always like to label it ND for normal distribution. Now another little reminder, we have two symbols that you see often in statistics. This one is a Greek letter called mu. And it represents the mean for a population. Pop is population. And this is the Greek letter called sigma. And it represents the standard deviation for a population. Okay, pop population. Now the empirical rule states that the center of a normally distribution or normally distributed set of data is the mean of the set of data. And the empirical rule specifically talks about one, two, and three standard deviations above and below the mean. Now one standard deviation above the mean, these are locations of data values, okay? So on this horizontal scale, we have data values. And this is just a general representation with the variables. One standard deviation above the mean can be found by doing the mu plus sigma, the mean plus one standard deviation, two standard deviations above the mean, mu plus two sigma, three standard deviations above the mean, mu plus three sigma. And of course, this curve will continue to the right I could do four, five, six, seven, and so on, standard deviations above the mean, but the empirical rule specifically talks about three standard deviations away from the mean. So one standard deviation below the mean would be mu minus sigma. Two standard deviations below the mean would be mu minus two sigma. And three standard deviations would be mu minus three sigma. So this is my general idea here. Now, <clears throat> The empirical rule talks about the percentage of data values that lie within one, two, or three standard deviations of the mean. So one standard deviation away from the mean is talking about one below or one above from here to here, this data value to this data value in our data set. And approximately 68% of all my values lie within these two numbers. Now I'll do an example after this, but we'll, re we'll represent it generally and then we'll do an example. Two standard deviations away from the mean, from this value to this value, approximately 95% of all the data values in a normally distributed set of data lie between these two numbers. Three standard deviations away from the mean, all the way from here to here, three below to three above, approximately 99.7% of all my data values lie there, which means that outside of these lies that extra 0.3%. Now, this is the general idea for the empirical rule, but we can get more detailed, more detailed. So if I were to, let's say, split this up into a bunch of different areas, right? These lines indicate one standard deviation above the mean, two above the mean, three above the mean, one standard deviation below, two below, three below. And I'm splitting up this curve into nice, all these different areas. Now, how can I get a little bit more specific here? Well, I'll just show you this too, just so you can see, right? just in case. I have a TI-89 here. You don't really need TI-89 for this. Any calculator will do, but I'm just going to show you. I'm going to calculate the area under the curve, which will represent the percentage. So here, between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean, this little area here, how many or what percentage of data values lie between these two numbers. So if 68% is between here and here, and this is of course symmetric, so this area is equal to this area, then if I cut 68 in half, 68 divided by two is 34, then I would say approximately 34% of all my data values lie between one standard deviation below the mean and the mean, and approximately 34% of all my da data values lie between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. Now I'm going to get even more detailed and go into these areas. What um, percentage lie between these two numbers? What percentage lie between these two numbers? And so on and so forth. So here we go. Approximately 95% lie between these two. I already kind of considered 68% here. So this extra area here is outside of 68%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 95%, right, from here to here. I'm going to subtract the 68%. 
and I'm going to say I have 27% left to go here and here. Well, this is a symmetric curve, so these areas are equal. So if I cut that in half, oops, 27 divided by 2, I get 13.5. So approximately 13.5% of my data values lie between one standard deviation above the mean and two above the mean, and approximately 13.5% lie between two standard deviations below the mean and one standard deviation below the mean. All right, remember these numbers here. These are data values in the data set. Now I'm going to keep going. These areas. So from here to here, 99.7% lie between these two numbers. Well, if I want to just deal with this area and this area, I already took care of 95%, correct? So the leftover is going to go here and here. So if I take 99.7 and I subtract 95, I get 4.7. 4.7% lie within, in total, these two areas. But it's a symmetric curve, so they're equal. So if I cut that in half, I get 2.35. Half of it here, 2.35%. Half of it here, 2.35%. Still going, because remember I said these um, curves, they continue forever in both directions. You see these arrows imply that. Even though 99.7% lie within three standard deviations of the mean, we still have a percentage that lie outside of that, even though it's very small. As you can see, very, very small. Because this total curve, the total area under the curve, represents 100% of the data. So 99.7% is not 100% of the data. So if I do 100 minus 99.7, I get 0.3% going in these two areas, half of it here and half of it here. Well, half of 0.3 is 0.15. So approximately 0.15% lies here and approximately 0.15% lies there. Now, if I add up all these percentages, I'll get 100%, oops, I'm sorry, guys, 100% of the data set. Okay. This is the general idea. Um, a couple more things before I actually do an example. You're going to hear in statistics them talk about unusual or usual uh, data values. <clears throat> we say that usual data values lie between or within, I'm going to say lie within, two standard deviations of the mean. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you look at my empirical rule here, 95% of all my data values lie between two standard deviations below the mean and two standard deviations above the mean, these two data values. 95% is definitely the majority. So we would say that <clears throat> any data value in the data set between these two numbers would be typical. 95% lie there. So if it's within the 95%, it would be usual, typical, usual type of data value outside of 95% would be an unusual kind of situation. So I'm going to say usual data values are between two standard deviations below the mean and two, oops, mu plus two sigma, two standard deviations above the mean. Unusual data values would be less than two, mu, sorry guys, mu minus two sigma, or unusual data values would be greater than two plus. I keep doing this guys, mu plus two sigma. Okay, general idea, right? This is not an example. Let me do an example, and then I'll come back to this. So, here's an example. We have IQ scores for adults. This is a typical example. Okay? And the IQ scores for adults have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Which means the average IQ score for an adult is 100. Okay, now IQ scores are normally distributed, which means they follow the symmetric bell-shaped curve. Right? The center of this curve is the mean, 
100. So on this curve, all these values along the horizontal scale represent IQ scores right now for adults. Okay? Now, remember if I convert this or if I use what we talked about before, this is mu, correct? And I said empirical rule talks about 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations away from the mean. So I'm going to say mu plus sigma, mu plus 2 sigma, mu plus 3 sigma, right? Mu minus sigma, we just did this, mu minus 2 sigma and mu minus 3 sigma. This is the general idea. I'm going to do it for this specific kind of situation. So, one standard deviation above the mean, mu plus sigma. 100 plus, sigma here is 15, 100 plus 15, 115. 115 is a data value, an IQ score that lies one standard deviation above the mean. Continue, add another 15. 100 plus, one, plus 15 is 115. Two standard deviations would be plus another 15, or 130. 130 is an IQ score that lies two standard deviations above the mean. Three standard deviations above the mean. I'm going to go another 15, 145. And of course, I could continue to the right, but we always specifically talk about three above or three below for um, empirical rule. One standard deviation below the mean would be 100 minus sigma, which is 15. So 85. The IQ score 85 lies one standard deviation below the mean. Two standard deviations below the mean. I'm going to subtract another 15 and get 70. 70 is an IQ score that lies two standard deviations below the mean. Three standard deviations below the mean. 55. I'm going to subtract another 15. So mu minus three sigma. So 55 is a data value or an IQ score that lies three standard deviations below the mean. So let's go ahead and look at our percentages here. Remember we split this up. Right, recall from before. This is the general empirical rule. We're going to be specific now for this case. So approximately 34% are here. Approximately 34% are here. Approximately 13.5%, approximately 13.5% here, approximately 2.35% here, approximately 2.35% here, and then down here approximately 0.15%, and here this little area approximately 0.15%, right? <clears throat> when I compare the two. So this is my example for IQ scores, this is my general empirical rule. Now let me ask you some questions based on what we just determined. What percent of adults have IQ scores between 85 and 115? So let's call this A. What percent of adults have IQ scores between 85 and 115? Well, 85 and 115 here on my uh, normal distribution curve lie between one below and one above. So between one below and one above or within one standard deviation of the mean, approximately 68% lie there. Right? Remember between one below and one above? So again, let me compare this. You see, the empirical rule indicates that approximately 68% lie within one standard deviation of the mean, one below and one above. So 85 and 115 lie one below and one above within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay. Here we go. Ask another question. Just what percentage of adults have IQ scores between 70 and 130. Between 70 and 130, well how far away from the mean is that? That's two below and two above, correct? What does the empirical rule state about that? Within two standard deviations of the mean, approximately 95% of all the data values are between those. So for IQ scores, 70 and 130 are two below and two above. Approximately 95% of all IQ scores lie between 70 and 130. So the percent of adults that have IQ scores between 70 and 130, approximately 95%. Okay. 
Okay. Keep going. What percent of adults have IQ scores between 55 and 145? Hopefully you can answer this one a little bit faster. Because where's 55 and 145? 55 and 145 are IQ scores that lie three standard deviations away from the mean. Again, the empirical rule, three standard deviations away from the mean. We have approximately 99.7% that lie between these two values. So on my IQ scores, this particular example, between 55 and 145, approximately 99.7%. Now I could be more specific here because we already separated our areas. So here, a little bit more specific. What percentage of adults have IQ scores between 100 and 115? Well, where's 100 and 115? 100 is the center and the mean. 115 is one standard deviation above the mean. So because we already split up our areas, what do we say? We say approximately 34% of all our data values lie between 100 and 115, or approximately 34% of IQ scores are between 100 and 115. What percent of adults have IQ scores greater than 145? Greater than 145. Well, here's my IQ score 145. Greater than 145 would be to the right of that, right? Because I'm increasing as I move from left to right along this line. Greater than 145, approximately 0 0.15, 0.15%, right? Are greater than 145. Okay, let me keep going. What percent of adults have IQ scores between 70 and 115. Now 70 is two standard deviations below the mean and 115 is one standard deviation above the mean. So I don't have you know a nice general like here, one below and one above approximately 68%, within two approximately 95%, within three approximately 99.7%. I'm being a little bit more detailed, I'm going from 70 to 115. Well, the nice thing about what we did, separating these areas, is now all I have to do is add up the percentages from here to here. So from 70 to 115, I have. And I'll just do it over here with you guys on my calculator, okay? From 70 to 115, I have 13.5 plus 34% plus 34%. I'm not going to go past that because I'm only between these two IQ scores. Enter, and I get... Approximately 81.5% of all IQ scores lie between 70 and 115. Let me do one more. G. What percent of adults have IQ scores between, let's do 115 and 145? This is an N symbol. 115 and 145. So here I am, over here and over here. One standard deviation above the mean and three standard deviations above the mean. So, all right. I already separated all my areas, so all I have to do is add these little areas, these percentages, to get from 115 to 145. So 115 to 130 is 13.5 plus 2.35 from 115 to 145. I get 15.85% approximately, right? So what percentage of IQ scores lie between 115 and 145? approximately 15.85%. Okay. Is an IQ score of 140 an unusual value? Is it an unusual IQ score? This is 140. I'm sorry guys if you can't tell. This is 140. Is it unusual? Okay, so here we go. Back to my little reference. What did I say? 95% approximately lie within two standard deviations of the mean, the empirical rule. So if I go outside of that, I'm talking about now unusual. So unusual values lie less than two standard deviations below the mean or more than two standard deviations above the mean. 
usual data values lie between or within two standard deviations of the mean. So if I compare this to my example here, right, two below and two above, I'll use a black pen for this. Here's two below and here's two above. Between these two numbers, I would have my usual IQ scores. Right? If I go above two standard deviations of the mean, now I'm talking about unusual IQ scores. If I'm going below two standard deviations of the mean, which in this case is an IQ score of 70, now I have unusual IQ scores. My pens are running out, guys. Right? So then, tell me, is an IQ score of 140 unusual? Or is 140 along this number line, which is my IQ scores? 140 is here. It's greater than, right, 140 is located above 130, so about here, 140. So it's definitely greater than two standard deviations above the mean. So if it's to the right of two standard deviations above the mean, then it would be an unusual IQ score. So is an IQ score of 140 unusual? Yes. Because it lies more than two standard deviations from the mean. And keep going. Okay, I have another question for you. What am I on? H, we're on I. Here's I. Is an IQ score of 90. Unusual. 90. Okay, so now I'm talking about an IQ score of 90. So where is that on my curve? 90 is here. Right? Within, I don't know why my black pen's not working. There we go. Within one standard deviation below the mean and the mean. So would you consider them unusual or usual? Well, usual IQ scores lie within two standard deviations of the mean. So in this case, between 70 and 130. So 90 is definitely within that. So is an IQ score of 90 unusual? No. It lies within two standard deviations of the mean. Let me do one more. Is an IQ score of 40 unusual? Well, where's 40 located? Definitely less than 55. So over here somewhere. Over here to the left of 55. Somewhere in that little area. Right? Over here somewhere. So that's less than three standard deviations from the mean. Below the mean. Would that be unusual or usual? Well, definitely it is less than two standard deviations below the mean, right? It's to the left of 70. So if I'm to the left of 70, then I'm unusual. So is an IQ score of 40 unusual? Yes. Okay, so again, this is specifically the empirical rule for normally distributed data. And this is one particular example. If you want examples or more examples, then I'll do some more videos. Let me know in the comment section. Also give me feedback. Go to my website, helpmeprofessorj.com. Give me some feedback. Let me know if you guys need more examples of this. We can keep going. Any questions? Leave a comment. All right, guys, thank you.